Welcome back my friends, for this video I explored the icy cellar. This is an area that proves without a doubt that even places with a high area level can be complete wastes of time. Okay, maybe I'm only half kidding. I did end up getting a couple really cool drops. After all, the area level is a respectable 83 and it's getting boosted to 85 soon, which means this was my last chance to document the area pre-patch. And quite the area it is. Filled to the brim with a million different monster types, it's like Blizzard just pulled 10 random ones out of a bag and called it a night, but they made sure to cherry pick the most annoying ones. Souls, dolls, pit vipers, and witches, this place is a nightmare. The area level is 83, so it's good, but the density, as you will soon see, was not so great. From what I noticed, there were anywhere from 3 to 7 champion packs each run, and this includes evil urn packs. On top of that, there is a super unique that spawns here called Snapchip Shatter. A strange name, but in terms of his monster level in treasure class, he is on par with Pindleskin, so that's pretty good. However, he didn't drop a goddamn thing for me. And on that note, let's see what I did find. It took 13 runs for something to finally drop, and here it is, a wizen drawn. The negative to enemy cold resistance probably makes this an okay bow for a freezing arrow build. I don't know, maybe throw it on one of the new Act 1 mercenaries and hope for the best. On run 20, a very special, unique pike drops. Take a good look at this one, that's right, it's the Dragon Chang's older brother. Yeah, no one uses this. Best case scenario, you hit level 27 and still haven't found an insight base, so you throw this on your mercenary. And yeah, it's gonna be pretty slow, but at least it'll hit pretty hard. On run 25, I found a frost wind on the way to the icy cellar. What a bizarrely bad item. Take a look at Nord's tenderizer, which isn't even that good. Frost wind is just straight up worse. On run 32, a head striker dropped, and a comment on one of my previous videos claimed that this was the best Act 5 mercenary weapon. Apparently, it's because Act 5 mercenaries get a hidden bonus to one-handed weapons, which doubles their damage, making an ethereal one of these better than a grief. On run 37, I found a pair of Tri-Res boots with really high gold find. Not the best pair in the world, but they rolled level requirement 29, so maybe these are usable on a low-level dueler. Many fruitless runs later, I found a wind hammer on run 61. Now, I've said it before and I'll say it again, this is an absolutely godly fury druid weapon. The only problem really is the strength requirement. Makes it a bit hard to manage. In this game, some set battle boots dropped. Now listen, Blizzard, I found enough set battle boots. Let's see more of the unique ones. No more set battle boots, no more set diadems. I'm done with that, okay? Spice it up a bit. Two runs later, a set Colossus Blade drops, and meanwhile, Laharis gets absolutely fucking annihilated off the side of the screen. Sorry, buddy. On run 81, a unique man catcher drops. This is Viper Fork, and yeah, I don't know about this one, Chief. The 50% IAS is pretty good, but other than that, I'm gonna have to stick to Insight. In the very next game, I found a Saigon Shield. Let's go! Nah, just kidding. It was actually a Colossus Crossbow, or rather, a Hellrack. It's alright, but Bariza kinda makes this look pathetic. The highest rune dropped on run 86, unfortunately, it was just a lem. Then an absolutely godly item drops on run 95, the savior of the icy cellar video, that's right, an ethereal hone sudan. Been chasing one of these for a while now. It just has so many uses, like you can throw it on a mercenary, you can throw it on a whirlwind barbarian, a fury druid, definitely one of my favorite uniques. The last drop of the session was on run 99, and man, I don't know what Blizzard North was smoking when they designed this one, but I want it. Incredible that they thought a Necromancer bow was one, a good idea, and two, that they needed to put Necromancer abilities on it, as if he doesn't have access to more powerful versions of them anyways. Good one, Blizz. So, was the Icy Cellar worth it? The density was mediocre, and so many of the monsters that spawn here fly over the river and die and drop no loot. I'd say it's worth farming when none of the other areas are available in your public magic find games. So for now, I'm gonna give it a C. I did find that one really cool unique. Outside of that though, not too much. Hopefully when I do another video on this in the future, it will have a redemption arc of some sort. But anyways, thanks for watching guys and I'll see you next time.